this tutorial, we use MapleSim's CAD toolbox to create a dynamic system model based on an existing CAD assembly. We begin by selecting the CAD import item from the file menu. Here we have a step file to select. Notice that a variety of formats are supported by the import tool. Select open to start the import process. The imported assembly is shown in the import CAD window. Here we see that the imported assembly is already grouped into three sub-assemblies and one part. Each top-level item in this tree will become a single rigid body in MapleSim, essentially welding together all their contained parts or sub-assemblies. Let's start with the base assembly. I'll first hide all other components. To enable interaction between bodies and other parts of the MapleSim model, we need to define the locations where multibody frames are to be added. This is done by adding coordinates to the CAD components. First, I add a coordinate to one of the surfaces. The coordinate is also visible in the object tree. Double clicking on the coordinate opens the properties window. Let's put this coordinate on the origin of the global coordinates and change its name to origin for easy reference. Next, I add another coordinate for the bearing joint between the base and the pulley. Notice that the arc feature in the CAD was detected by the tool. I'll change the name of this coordinate to pulley bearing. Let's repeat the process for the slider bearing joint. We rename this whole centered coordinate to slider bearing. To create joints in MapleSim, we need two appropriately placed multibody frames. This is easily accomplished by copying and pasting the coordinates. Let's start with the slider bearing coordinate. Using the right click menu, I copy the coordinate and paste the coordinate on the slider part. Okay. Let's make all parts visible and finish the second pair for the pulley bearing. I copy the pulley bearing coordinate in the object tree and paste on a part belonging to the pulley subassembly. Next, I add another coordinate for the shaft bearing. The coordinate is placed automatically on the center of the bearing. I also change the name of this coordinate to shaft bearing. Before moving on, I'll add another coordinate for the sliding constraint between the shaft and the slider. I'll change the name to shaft guide. Just like the previous two joints, I will duplicate the newly added coordinates on the shaft subassembly to the respective mating parts. First, I copy the shaft bearing coordinate and paste it onto the pulley assembly. And then I copy the shaft guide coordinate and paste it on the slider part. Now we are ready to move to MapleSim. The import process is completed by clicking the accept button. The information extracted from the CAD file together with the user defined groupings or subassemblies and the coordinates are used to create rigid body parts reflecting the shape, color, mass and inertia properties. This pop-up window informs us that the import process has completed and the assembly parts are now available in the hierarchy section under the definition tab. The hierarchy gets the same name as the imported CAD file and each part and sub-assembly is named as it was in the original CAD file. As you remember, the imported CAD had three sub-assemblies and one part. In MapleSim, we get a rigid body for each plus an additional group subassembly for ease of use. Let's add the base part to the canvas. The imported CAD was created with the global z-axis pointing upwards and I select the same gravity orientation for MapleSim. I'll force the result manager window to remain on top by clicking the little anchor button. The construct view tab in the result manager window gives immediate visual feedback as the model is assembled on the modeling canvas. After the initial parts are created in MapleSim, the user can edit features by double-clicking on the CAD component. For example, 
let's change the transparency of the base component. Notice that in this window, only the base subassembly is shown. I'll select all of the parts and use the right-click menu to check the translucent option. I'll click on the Accept button to apply the changes and go back to MapleSim's main window. Now the base is also shown as a transparent shape in the Construct view. We can quickly find the name and location of the multibody frames of interest by hovering the mouse pointer on the ports, and here we see the name Tooltip and the coordinates visualization in the Construct view. First things first, I'm going to connect a fixed frame to the port named Origin. Under the Library tab, I drag a fixed frame from the multibody palette to the canvas. Next, I bring in the pulley component. I need to find out where the pulley bearing frame is. By adjusting the arrangement, I'm ready to create the revolute joint representing the pulley bearing. I drag in the revolute from the joints and motion section of the multibody palette and make connections between frames. Although I'm not finished, what is on the canvas is a valid multibody model which can be simulated. Let's see what happens. The crank swings back and forth due to its off-center mass. Okay, let's continue. First, I'll switch from the Result Manager window back to the Construct view. Now let's look at the slider component. Notice that the slider appears in a correct location as given by the original CAD assembly. Another Revolute joint is added to connect to the two slider bearing frames. Now I add in the shaft component. By highlighting the multibody frame, I can quickly see which frames are coinciding. In this case, I am looking at the slider guide constraint, which will be represented by a prismatic joint. First, I'll flip the component to simplify the layout. Then I drag in a prismatic joint from the joints and motion section of the multibody palette and connect the frames. Notice that the default direction of a prismatic joint in MapleSim is the x-axis. Here, however, we need the z-axis. The last constraint is the slider bearing, which will be another Revolute joint. With these connections, we have the complete mechanical system ready in MapleSim. Let's simulate the model to see its behavior and make sure all connections are correct. The motion of the unactuated and frictionless slider crank system is what we would have expected. Let's make the model more realistic by adding damping to all bearings. For simplicity, I'll add a small amount of damping using the linear damping parameter of the Revolute joint. And I'll also add damping to the sliding bearing. I'll simulate the model again and observe the effect of damping. As expected, the system comes to rest quickly. Let's finish this dynamic model by adding actuations. Here I'm going to add an electrical motor to actuate the pulley. I select a DC permanent magnet motor from the electric library palette. I'll connect the 1D rotational flange of the motor to the same on the Revolute joint, connecting the pulley to the base. I now need to energize the electric motor. First, I will add an electrical ground. Then I will use a lithium ion battery from MapleSim's battery library. I'll set the initial state of charge to 80% and leave all other parameters as the default values. Let's add two probes to measure the state of charge of the battery and the rotational speed of the pulley. And there we have it. In 10 minutes, we've gone from our CAD model to a multi-domain dynamical model we can use for simulation. 
Let's run the model one last time to see its response. The plot on the left shows the decrease in battery charge, while the plot on the right captures the variation of the angular velocity due to the acceleration of the reciprocating shaft and the off-center mass of the crank.